Hello everyone, it's Raven here, and today we have a battle replay of the Warriors of Chaos versus the Wood Elves. So today, you can see from my army composition, three Chaos Warriors, three units of Forsaken, two units of Dragon Ogres, a Dragon Ogre Shagoth, and a Chaos Sorcerer with the Lore of Metal. And for him, we got a couple spells, one of them being the uh, Final Transmutation, which is really good if you can pop it on the front line with a Lord or any single entity targets or anything like a Dragon Ogre unit in that vicinity because it'll do a lot of damage to them. As well as a Transmutation of Lead because that'll really help in a front line engagement as well. Minus 26 melee attack and 25% weapon damage down. That's pretty crazy. It's a really good debuff. And over here on the flank, I brought these guys. I really don't ever pick these guys very much, but right here, they're kind of a niche pick just because there's Tree Ken and Tree Men in the opponent's army. They don't have the best combat stats, but their missile damage is very high in armor piercing, so I just realized that, you know, I can run these guys around and kind of kite any uh, Wood Elf cavalry that might have been on the field, which there is a couple of. So uh, we're pretty lucky that, you know, they're not wild riders or anything like that. But over here, he does have two units of Tree Ken and a Glade Lady on a dragon. So very good pick for me. I can really use this guy against anything in this army pretty much. And it'll have good effects for me. So can I go ahead and move forward and then uh, take a look at my opponent's army over here. So we got two units of Glade Riders over here with Hackbane Tips. We're going to be doing poison damage and magical damage. So anything over here with physical resistance is going to be uh, negated. But thankfully, we don't have anything like that. Over here, four units of Eternal Guard, a Branch Wraith with Earth Blood. It's been doing a lot of healing in this battle, I, I, I swear. This thing lasted for so long, it was such a pain. Two units of Treekin, three units of Glade Guard with Starfire Shafts, and two units of Azrai Spear Warriors. So these guys, or should I say girls, these girls are insane. They hit so hard. They have 20 armor piercing damage. No, no, I think it's actually 23 armor piercing damage. And then, uh, okay, no, it's a bonus versus large of 23 and armor piercing of 20, but the, the bonus versus large does count as armor piercing, so they do have a, a total armor piercing damage of 43 against large targets, so they're going to be a pretty big counter to my Dragon Ogres over here, my Dragon Ogre Shagoth, and my Lord. If they got on my Lord, that would just be absolutely terrifying. He wouldn't be able to do anything to get out of there. He doesn't hit hard enough, he doesn't have enough splash damage, and even though he's really heavily armored, that heavy AP off these girls would just absolutely tear him apart. And for the Lord over here, we do have the Glade Lady, so we're going to be seeing the Arrows of Kurnos, Prey of Anathrama, and hopefully some Dragon Breath. The Breath attacks on dragons in this game are just absolutely fierce. They'll destroy anything they can get a hold of, especially with a, like a Moon Dragon or a Forest Dragon right there looking at us all evil-like right there. So over here, he has split up his army. I don't know if you can see this or not, but over here, so I put my Dragon Ogres in the forest because they had, they had such a high missile presence that I just really didn't want them to get shot up before I could really get them on targets that are juicy and I could really do a lot of damage against because really, what they're going to be good against is these Tree Ken or the Lord or units that just can't defend themselves like these uh, Glade Guard with Starfire Shafts. They would really crush these guys right here, these Glade Riders, but they have a movement speed of 94 compared to their, what is that? 76 and 64 so just not nearly enough not nearly enough at all but what i am going to do is i'm absolutely going to demolish these wood elves in the frontline engagement these forsaken have 63 weapon strength when they have a uh, frenzy on so when they charge they're going to be doing like 25 to like 50 percent of the hp on these eternal guard and, and i have three of these guys so they're going to be hitting pretty hard and not only that these chaos warriors do have silver shields and 100 armor so Though Eternal Guard do have high armor piercing damage, they're not going to be able to do very much stuff against uh, these Chaos Warriors because they just don't hit hard enough. Right here, this charge going off, and it's absolutely brutal. <laughs> See right there, about 40% off these these uh, Eternal Guard right here, and they lost about 20 models as well. And that was just from the initial shock damage of the charge. And then once they're left in sustained melee, it just starts going insane. They start plummeting to the floor. All these guys dropping like flies while these Forsaken are taking a lot of damage in return as well, but... Honestly, the trade is so it's so positive in my favor right here because now I can just start rolling down the line and getting surrounds on all these guys. And right here, I do have these uh, Marauder Horsemen in the back throwing in their axes against these tree cannon. And you can see it's whittling, whittling away at them pretty substantially. I don't have a lot of AP besides these guys, except uh, over here. I do have a lot of AP, but this, this squad is going to get shot down if they come into combat. So I'm kind of scared of that. So I was kind of really pitching everything uh, on these guys right here and then just allowing for my numbers to absolutely swarm the living hell out of these poor Treekin. And that's exactly what's happening. I roll down the lines with these Forsaken and I'm like, oh, these 
these guys haven't routed. I'm trying to pull these guys through. These guys are running around. I'm like, okay, all right, come back over here, hit these guys in the back, and then just make them go away. So that's exactly what I did. The Earth Blood going off right there is going to save these Treekin from losing too many models. Over here, these Eternal Guard are staying relatively healthy because they're only fighting Chaos Warriors. But here come the Forsaken. They're going to be charging them in the back pretty soon, and that's going to be absolutely brutal. They're going to start losing lots of models now. You can see they already lost a couple just initially. But they're really going to start add adding up as the, the rest of these guys are starting to route away, and I just start pushing through with the hordes of chaos. Over here, the dragon has landed, and I start pulling in my entire army over here. This is a really bad choice for my opponent. It's kind of smart right now and kind of a safe play, but at the same time, here comes the beatdown squad through the forest, and once they get on that dragon, that's going to be game over. Like If he can't get out off the ground, and I'm just able to get a surround on him with dragon ogres, a dragon ogre shagoth, I'll and pop transmutation of lead or final transmutation it's going to be a very very bad time for this blade lady and right now she's already taking about 10 percent hp damage just from these forsaken and chaos warriors that are surrounding her alone because she's such a big target even though she has 40 melee defense these guys have 40 excuse me 34 melee attack these forsaken oh man i thought i had some forsaken over here perhaps i don't maybe they all went back over here to finish off these treekin which is I guess the best choice. They hit harder than anybody else. But right here, we're almost out of ammunition for these guys. But here come the beatdown squad. So this poor guy right here got uh, locked down by that net. But the dragon ogres get on the lady, and you're going to start seeing lots of HP coming off of her very quickly. So she actually dropped down about 25% HP after just a few moments of contact with this giant dragon ogre force. But the Azurai spears start being pulled in, and they're going to absolutely lay the smack down on these poor chaos warriors. In the meantime, this dragon's going to be trying to get out of here because... Um, if he can get a breath attack down on this group right here, like if he breath down right here on this dragon ogre Shagoth, that would probably kill some dragon ogres, do a good bit of damage to all these troops and all sorts of stuff like that. Oh man. Oh, and that's exactly what he did. Oh boy. That was a beautiful target. Didn't do a whole lot of ink single target damage to this uh, dragon ogre Shagoth, but in the meantime, all these guys are getting lit up pretty hard by all these archers in the background over here. They have such high armor piercing damage, and there's just so many of them that are just uncontested in the field that it's really tearing me apart. So I start sending these Chaos Warriors to chase down these Glade Guard right here. They get some initial contact. They don't lose any models yet, but they're going to start losing them quite soon. And then they turn, and the shields are going to not be protecting these guys at all. You can see all these flanking shots just tearing apart these Chaos Warriors. That is a huge mistake on my part. Giant blunder. So I should be turning these guys around very soon, or if I can, I guess I might lead them in combat right here. But then the, the dragon over here tries to intercept and get these guys tied up. They're just getting shredded apart. That is so bad. So I'm realizing that this is just a massive blunder on my part, and I start sending forward my dragon ogres to start trying to deal with these archers, because if I can at least contest them, the more people I kill, the less people that fire, am I right? So I'm coming over here, and I'm going to start trying to charge these guys as much as possible with these dragon ogres on the glade riders, and these dragon ogres... Uh, oh, yeah... Dragon Ogres, yeah, that's what they are over here on these Glade Guard. And then over here, I'm going to try and get some uh, kills on these Glade Riders. Glade Guard, excuse me, with these Marauder Horsemen over here. Now, like I said, they don't have the best melee stats, but against Archers, I really don't care. They're going to be doing some really good work for me. Not a whole lot of damage off the charge right there, but then the surround is on, and they're going to start absolutely tearing these people apart. But right here, the Dragon Ogre is once again locked down by a net and is being shot to pieces. And it's going to actually route because it's going to get tapped right there in the back by the dragon right here this is not the place this person wants to be because if my dragon ogre decides to rally and turn around i'm gonna be able to probably kill that lord if i can get enough damage on her and right here you can see she's pulling through everything cavalry chaos warriors my lord everything is just being pulled through by that dragon so much mass and then over here the dragon ogres come in and start trying to get a little bit of a surround on these archers and we're just absolutely laying the beat down on these guys 50 kills on these guys 27 on these guys and this is all on precious precious archers that these wood elves desperately need to keep alive right here these guys kind of turned around just get a couple shots off but they really just need to get out of town these Azrai war dancers are coming over here and they're going to be able to tear apart these guys anytime they get into contact because their spears hit so hard against these dragon ogres and it's going to be such a bad time but right now they are running for their lives and they're going to be plowing through them and knocking them over before they can actually do any charge animations or anything like that but as they catch them on the flanks right here kind of moving in anybody that's left alone is going to be torn apart so i'm really just trying to like run as fast as i can to get these people but they're getting caught up in these trees which gives them a massive speed debuff and potentially to their melee defense i believe as well so it's a really bad place for me as whereas these ladies right here fighting in the forest is their native environment so 
they're right where they want to be against, anti, uh, you know, using their anti-large bonus to its full efficiency and in the trees where these guys have a debuff. And right there, two Dragon Ogres go down to the breath of the Mighty Dragon over here. And right here, the Dragon Ogre Shadgoth has arisen from its, its route. It's going to be coming to lay down the smack on these Tree Ken because really, he's going to be hitting the hardest. And though he doesn't have much HP, these Tree Ken will fall because they don't have much HP. There are seven of them, but they only have 1,800 between the seven of them HP-wise. And these archers are starting to fire in against all my Dragon Ogres as well. And they're getting really weak. These ones ride it off. These ones are starting to rout. And that Dragon comes down to try and finish off my Dragon Ogre Shagoth, and it gets a good hit from the rear. Right here, my Lord starts pulling in, and my Dragon Ogre actually doesn't get to turn around and put a hit on the Lord. Right here, these Dragon Ogres are doing what they need to do. Oh, except they got terrified, so no, lo no longer are they doing what they need to do, but these guys are going to be coming back to try and save the day. And uh, really, the Lord's just getting so low, because my Lord right here actually has a sort of anti-heroes pop, and he's going to be hitting pretty hard for for a mage, I guess, and he's so heavily armored, as well as the final transmutation of ledge being on this guy. He's not landing all the attacks he should, he's not hitting as hard as he should, and he's weaker than my Lord. I have almost doubled the HP of him, and the Dragon Ogres are coming in. And then Army Losses hits the board because he no longer has any heroes and all of his forces have routed from the field. He just had nothing left to save him and I could have absolutely torn that dragon apart. All he had left was one Dragon Breath attack and maybe one arrow of Kurnaf's left. And that really wouldn't have been enough to stop my lord and all these dragons. Dragon Ogre, excuse me. But a very good game to my opponent. I love playing Wood Elves. Just the kite and delaying the fight for as long as possible, letting the archers do their job, while the Warriors of Chaos are just all about the charge, all about the grind of combat, just two completely opposite races being pitted against each other. I love that. That's my favorite thing. I love playing the Wood Elves, and I love playing the Warriors of Chaos, so anytime I can actually have a game with both of them where I play either one, I don't even care. I love it. It's my favorite matchup. And right here, you can see that the Fer Forsaken just paid... <laughs> They just paid themselves in full, right? They did so much work for me. These poor Eternal Guards, yeah, they did a lot of damage to my, my Forsaken initially, but they just got absolutely torn apart and just weren't allowed to survive long enough for them to really get any efficiency on uh, these Dragon Ogres or my Dragon Ogre Shagoth or anything like that, and they're just absolutely ripped apart. It's very good stuff there, and these uh, Chaos Warriors acted as a pretty good pincushion, I guess you could say, for all these archers. They do have pretty good armor, pretty good HP, and that silver shield, but, you know... If they, if they had just kept marching forward with their shields up, oh man, that would have been perfect. But you know, you know, things happen. You lose micro on some things as you try and gain micro on something else, like your Lord Dragon Ogres. It's more important to pay attention to your heavy hitters than it is a single infantry unit. However, right there, spending one spare second to kind of put them in a line for going like this to like that, and just getting all the shots being blocked from the front instead of hitting them in the sides and just melting them like they did, that probably would have been really good for me. But as, you know, that is what it is. And as always, guys, uh, if you like what you saw, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more, comment down in the comment section down below if you want to see any races of the old world or new world pit against, pitted against each other, or the new world against the new world, old world versus old world, you know? Not too picky, I love playing all the races, they all deserve their fun, and uh, as always, guys, I'll catch y'all later.